sweeping in from the Atlantic. On the Isles of Scilly, winds of 79, 79 miles an hour were recorded, with strong gusts causing huge waves lashing the south coast. In Devon, the storm brought almost 40 millimetres of rain in some places, more than a third of what would normally fall in a month. One of the areas hardest hit in recent weeks is Somerset, and our correspondent John Kay has spent the day there. He joins us now from the village of Eastling. John. 70 miles an hour at the moment, and you know Friday night, probably one of the worst times of the week for a storm like this to hit the UK, because so many people are travelling around, travelling back home from work. We're getting stations on the railways, and of course roads, like this one, completely blocked. Trees down, power down, winter of chaos. It is the third major storm this week, smashing its way in from the Atlantic this evening, leaving the southwest's already fractured railway. Even more was supposed to be land. It whipped up the flood water on the Somerset levels. So this is the latest victim. Too many. I just can't believe that it's keeping on and on and on raining and raining so hard as well. Um, and we're under now. Never been flooded before. It's just ridiculous. Next door, Richard's now got 2,000 sandbags. But will it be enough? You can't beat nature, I don't know. For many, though, the fight is wider, ever deeper. Just when you think things can't get any worse, just when you think the wind does, look, up to the door knocker here, that's the, on the Somerset levels, every day, still. Buffeted by wind and sprayed by rain, we headed to Gloucester. Badly flooded seven years but the weekend tides will be a challenge. Is the river seven? It's all making the Ayres family rather paranoid. They came to Gloucester for safety after their street in Surrey home could go under as well. That's a bit surreal, isn't it? You know, the birds have been moved from one flood zone to the other, but they're taking in their stride. Where next? Spain, I think, a bit of sun. <laughs> yeah. No such call tonight. Forecasters say after this storm we will get something of a break, but before that, a wild weekend. John Day, BBC News. So as we've been hearing, another difficult day for communities which have already been coping with sodden and flooded land. Across England, almost 6,000 properties have been affected since the extreme weather, weather set in in December. In the Thames Valley, the relief effort was today bolstered by Princes William and Harry, who joined the sandbagging effort in the village of Datchet. Robert Hall reports. In a flood hit village where volunteers have played such an important part, extra pairs of hands are always welcome. At Eton End Primary School, after a print, the princes waded in to join a chain. Palace said they'd wanted to do what they could with the armed forces personnel who'd helped to lift morale. The Queen is contributing feed and bedding from the Royal Farm, the Somerset levels. It's the end of working week along the Thames. Five days when thousands try to keep their lives on track and their emotions in check. It doesn't matter about the fridge or the washing machine, that can be replaced, but stuff in here that you've built up. When you travel in this direction, coming down the Thames, but if we now make a turn and see the amount of power that we're having to use, the Thames has fallen by about nine inches over the last couple of days. I visited the river and Nikki Barber and her husband were loading their chemical toilet onto a canoe. With main drains out of action, they had to empty it at her mother's home, just one element in a new routine. In the morning I go out with the dogs, but we've got four dogs, yeah. so only two will sit in the canoe. So we tow two out, come back, then do the next two, come back, then I get changed, ready for work, go back out again. On the flooded lane, we met his family. His triplets haven't been able to leave the house for eight days. Everyone fails every day to check a new if we need to get out or do anything. Watching the water rise. Now, with levels falling... It was the worst flooding in, well, recorded history, apparently. Um, what's good? We've made it through. The Thames remains a threat, but perhaps, just perhaps, the worst is over. Robert Hall, BBC News, Shepparton. Well, it's been the cumulative effect of so many storms and their intensity that has made the last couple of months of weather so exceptional. This was the story today as it moved science editor David Shookman. Around the clock, a desperate effort to fix the shattered rail link to Cornwall. What the team here at Dawlish needs, like everyone, is a break that we may be at a turning point. 
We've just got this video from Whit Church in Shropshire. The roof of a council building ripped off. It's hard to believe, but the forecast is for less violent times ahead. At the Met Office in Exeter, they've been watching storm after storm for long months. At last, the satellite pictures show... Friday will be the last of the intense storm of the series. We're now expecting the storms next week to be less intense, but not saying that we're out of the woods yet, because the catchments are quite sensitised to further rainfall. They're completely saturated. Any rain that comes through is likely to cause further impacts. The River Thames at Reading surging at instruments that measure the river level. Teams from the Environment Agency track exactly how it's changing, and they say the danger is not over. The River Thames here at Reading is flowing four times faster than normal. 200 tonnes of water are passing through here every second. The problem is a delayed river will work its way down. So even if the continue... I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to see that lot more. The flood forecaster briefs a colleague. They're working in shifts to call data from the Met Office and then work out where the next flood may strike. In one of the country's most densely populated areas, the official in charge says there's still a huge volume of water around. The river is a big river, it's flowing very fast in places and people need to be wary of the risk. And there are some areas and communities where there is flooding there and people need to be taking care, so we're still going to keep the severe flood water. So what's next? A massive snowstorm underway in the United States may eventually affect us. These scenes are thousands of miles away, but a weather event this severe creates show a stream of cloud that could reach us right across the Atlantic in several days' time. David Truckman, BBC News. The former editor of the Daily Mirror, Piers Morgan, has refused.